Hi, everyone, and welcome to Hello Prosperity. This is our brand new version of Rich Single Mama Radio. I'm excited to have Dr. Jill with us today. She is a single mom, and she is doing amazing things. Welcome, Jill. Thanks so much for being on the show today. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I always love to know the background story of a single mom that I have on my show who's doing great professionally or in their business. Tell me a little bit about your single mom journey. Sure. I have been a single mom for over eight years and I was actually supposed to marry my daughter's father. I got pregnant pretty quickly in the relationship. So four, six months into the relationship, it was a surprise, but we were both pretty excited. And I was like, oh, this guy will be a really good dad. And so I really didn't have any concerns about it whatsoever. Financially, we were good. We had the house, the cars, the jobs, like from the outside, it's everything you would think you would need to start a family. And so I didn't even think anything bad of it. We were engaged. We were, had everything ready for the wedding. Everything was picked out and the dress and the tux and the decorations and the honeymoon. So everything was ready. We had redone his house to have a nursery. Everything was good. I finally felt for the first time in my life content and settled and I finally got my stuff together. And out of nowhere, a couple weeks before our wedding, I found a text message that was clearly not meant to be read by me. And all the messages before that were gone. They were deleted out of the phone. So when I confronted him about it, there was denial at first, right? There's still denial, but he said, oh, that must've been meant for someone else. And I just, in my gut, in my heart, I was like, no, like this is not an accident. Yeah. I did not see this text by accident. And yes, it broke my heart, but I was at a kind of a fork in the road in my life. Are you going to marry into this lie when mm -hmm. you know what's going on and believe him because that's what feels good. And I've done that before. I've believed people because it felt good. It felt better than the truth. And I don't even know like why. I, honestly, I'm very spiritual and believe in divine intervention. And I think at that point in my life, that's really what it was. There was something stronger than my desire to get married and have a family. And I called off the wedding. I moved out with a diaper bag for my daughter one duffel bag for myself, went crawling back to my dad because also during this relationship, red flag, by the way, ladies, he had put a barrier between me and my family. And I used to be very close to my dad. I was a daddy's girl forever. Mm -hmm. And he had driven a pretty big wedge between my father and I, which at the time I did also didn't know was a red flag. Uh, so I went crawling back to my dad's house <laughs> and said, I'm not getting married. And also I need a place to live. So my dad let me live with them and they had, of course, downsized because all of us kids were grown and out of the house. Yeah. So there I was with my baby, 11 months old, sleeping on a futon in this back room of my dad's house with our two bags of stuff, trying to figure out how are you going to rebuild from here? And I look back at some of the photos and the videos in that time in my life and can see the pain and the worry in my eyes and just, it's if only you could see the future, right? 10 years yeah. into the future and know that it would all be okay. But when you're in it, I completely understand these women that are panicked and lonely and sad and, oh my God, what, how am I ever going to get out of this? Absolutely. So that. That was like my rock bottom. The other kind of complexity about my single mom journey is I'm also an alcoholic and probably drug addict tendencies, although alcohol was my go-to of choice. But mm -hmm. if I had one, I had them both. I also had to learn what is your crutch going to be because you cannot take care of a child and drink and use drugs. In addition to being a single mom trying to get on my feet, I also needed to figure out how to be sober and how to stay sober, which I did. Yeah, bravo. Absolutely. That's, that brings up so many other questions, of course, follow-up <laughs> questions for you in terms of having to completely reinvent your life. That's one of the things that I, in talking with single moms, you get to a, a, this space that 
forking the road, that crossroad where you literally have to reinvent your life. And you can end that point in that moment. What are some decisions that you had to make at that pivotal point of your life that would take you to where you are right now? There were a lot, whether to get married or not. That was the first really big one. My alcohol was the second one. So I did, I lived with my dad. I didn't drink while I lived with my dad, but then I bought a house. And after I bought a house and I had a little free time, I did go back to drinking for about six months. I think it took six months for me to hit rock bottom again. Stupid stuff happened. Oh my God, just stupid stuff. And I woke up one day. And my drinking rock bottom was that I couldn't remember if I would put my child to bed. I didn't know if she was home. I'd been blacked out. And I woke up that day and it was eerily reflective of my childhood. And so this was the second big decision I made was I literally said to myself, are you going to give this child the same life that you had mm -hmm. and let her experience that? Or are you going to make a decision to get sober today? Luckily, all the alcohol was gone in my house. So that helped the decision a little bit for the day. But it was my second wake-up call. And then the third one was finances. Are you going to struggle financially and blame everything on him and what he did? Or are you going to suck it up and figure out what is the path you need to get on to make more money to take better care of yourself. And so that was my third biggest decision. Like, how do I make more money? And what is the path? And I remember mapping it out. Like I looked up, this is literally what I did. I said, by the age of 30, I want to be a director in a large global IT organization in healthcare. And I want to be making quarter million dollars a year. At that time, I was making 65,000 a year. I'm like, this is crazy. But that's what I decided. And so by 32, so I missed, no, I was 31. By 31, that's who I was. I was a director for a multi-global, huge company out of Boston, Massachusetts, making a quarter million dollars a year. So yes, I missed my goal by one year. I take it as a win. I made the decision and I did it. And so that I think is the third thing. The fourth thing though, is this victim mindset. And I just wrote mm -hmm. a blog about this actually. And it's really easy, especially when you've been cheated on, neglected, abandoned, abused, right? They've run your name through the mud. I dealt with that too. It is so easy to say they did this, right? And to be vindictive and to blame them and to say, you took everything away from me. But I made the decision to just say, I don't care. Yep, you hurt me. But what's more important is how I care for me and how I care for my child. And I just made the decision that I wasn't going to be a victim. And I just have followed that. Jill, you are preaching. You are preaching the <laughs> message that I always preach to single moms about all of it. Making decisions, shifting your mindset, getting rid of the victim mentality, and retaking control of your life. That is, to me, like the four cornerstones of being a successful single mom, of moving into this place of abundance and prosperity versus feeling like you are just never going to have what you dreamed of having because of this incident, this temporary situation that happened in your life. And yes, it did bring forth a child, but <laughs> children are a blessing. I had to really look at it that way and see that. But thanks so much for just reinforcing these concepts because it's so important for single moms, no matter how you became one, to understand that you actually have control over your life. You can reinvent your life. These decisions that you make are going to have a ripple effect over your whole life and your children's lives and their children's lives. And so it's really important to make good decisions from the start. So tell me about, I know you spoke about your career. And so are you still in that same career or are you doing something different? I believe you, you pretty much are starting a business right now. You've got some amazing <laughs> things happening. So yeah. what are you doing right now? So I flipped my life upside down. During COVID, I sold everything I owned in New England and picked up just me, my daughter, and the dog. We got in the car, drove to Florida. I had no expectations. I still had my job in Boston, working remote, obviously. 
and had this sudden urge to start an e-commerce business for fashion. And I all, I've all i always loved fashion. I went to school for healthcare administration. Like my doctorate is in healthcare. You can't be like right side versus left side of the brain. Those are like two complete polar opposites. I couldn't even draw. I had to hire designers so I could verbally tell them this is what I want and have them draw it. Like it was so different. And I did that for about a year and a half and it wasn't making enough money to replace my income. It was taking every waking minute outside of my working job to try to run that business. It was just really heavy. E-commerce is so busy and saturated. It's easy to enter into it, but it's hard, very hard to be successful. And after a year and a half, I'm like, this is crazy. This is so crazy. There has to be something else I can do. I had hired a mentor to help me. I wanted her to guide me to get that business to a place that I could sell it, get it generating enough revenue to sell it. It's both a curse and a blessing though. She told me no one cares about you running a business as a single mom. They don't care that you're a mom. They only want to know what are you doing in the business? What do you have to offer? How is it helping them? And I was like, okay. So I rebranded. I took everything off my social media that had to do with me being a mom. And then I was like, oh my God, what do I talk about? I'm a single mom 99.9% .9 of the time. I don't know what else to talk about. It's such an integral part of my life. Yeah. And I fired her because I had enough, like, it's like the gut instinct came back and was like, Jill, this woman's giving you bad advice. And so I fired her, I hired a new woman and she was the exact opposite. She's no, your strength and what you should be sharing is how you are a single mom that's been successful. So then I went all the way to the other end of the spectrum, started a business based on helping single moms and now single parents. And basically what I do, there's different income streams and different programs I offer, but I started with writing a book. I was like, I just want to write a book. I just want to bring this problem to light because nobody talks about how many single moms there are. I didn't even know. And so I started writing the book, which of course is where I met you and other amazing women and just happened to be attracting like superstars that I was like, these are the women that need to be on a platform to go tell other women how they can help themselves. And like, how to get out of that victim mindset, stop blaming people, stop waiting for people to help. Because oftentimes nobody's coming to help you. And that, that is a hard pill to swallow. And then from building that, I am talking to so many women who don't have the financial aptitude to be a part of those programs. I was like, okay, how do then we fix this issue of single parents not making enough money? And what does it come down to? It comes down to jobs. Mm -hmm. And there are certain careers, certain industries where you make more money. So now I'm looking at other opportunities to help single parents get in those jobs, make more money, have more flexibility, like working from home, things like that. And then I've got a project going on in the back end that I haven't publicly announced that has to do with housing, but I think um, people will be really happy and excited about that. Just as far as affordable housing, that's not Section 8, giving single parents the opportunity to live in a nice space that isn't going to break the bank. So those are just some of the things I've got going on right now. Sure. So how are you balancing yeah. motherhood and business? I mean, that's because business takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And then of course, your little ones, they definitely need the time and energy from you in order to be able to actually literally survive. So how do you balance right. both? That's right. First of all, I'll just be fully honest. I feel mom guilt every day, every single day. I was laughing because I went and joined a gym yesterday because I need to start taking care better care of my body. Like I was in a gym and then I quit and I'm like, girl, you need to be in a class or else I won't work out. So I went to join the gym. I brought my daughter with me because I was like, I want to get her to work out with me, things like that. She didn't like it, but I still joined. So it's then I felt mom guilt because I joined the gym. So it's every single day, but I have decided to homeschool her. Mm. Part of that is because she's a creative mind. And I think creative minds don't necessarily fit well in the square mm. public school system and even in private schools. So she is homeschooled. So she's with me all day. I try to get her involved in my business. So mm -hmm. I used to be very 
it's like separation of church and state. You want to do that. Like you want to separate parenting and business, but you can't, I mean, you can, but I think it's very difficult. So what I've started to do is integrate business learning into her homeschooling. Like today I was looking for places we could go drop flyers off. I had her sit with me and write down, okay, where can we go to bring these flyers? So for me, I have honestly done away with trying to separate everything so black and white. Like it's not mm. black and white, it's very gray. So how do I involve her in exercise? How do I involve her with learning about healthy eating? How do I get her included in building businesses? We created a profile for her on like project casting or something for kids to start looking at like modeling and mm. acting and singing things. So she can start to even make her own money and start to see the value and the work that goes into making money. And she's only nine. So that's my approach. My approach has been to just throw it to the wind to try to separate and balance everything and just try to include her. Some days I'll be heavy on the work. Some days I'll be heavy on the parenting. Like last weekend, I think, or two weeks ago, we went to Orlando and I just took four days off and we just did fun stuff. And so it was like a mini vacation. Yeah, I just, I think there's a lot of pressure for us to try to perfectly balance it. And I think give yourself the grace to not perfectly balance it and let it be a gray area. Yeah, absolutely. I totally understand. I homeschooled my kids for a while and I just took a very, try to take a very holistic approach to learning in life because life is learning. That's you, right. Every time, every moment of the day, you're learning something new. And then of course, honing in on their interest and honing in on what made sense and mattered to them. And so with that interest being piqued, learning wasn't boring. So <laughs> that, uh, that really was, uh, I think, really helpful for me and for my family. What kind of, I think you talked about it a bit, but even in your explanation of balancing motherhood and business, but the kind of legacy you want to leave for your daughter, how, what does that look like for you? For me, I think first is I want her to do what she wants to do. So I am building these businesses fully aware that she may have zero interest in taking over these businesses. And I am okay with that. I tell her all the time, even if you don't want the businesses, you can inherit them and sell them and take that money and do what you want with it. To some extent, I'm like, don't waste it. Don't be buying a bunch of cars. I'm also in real estate. If she wants to be a part of these businesses, she will have those so that she doesn't have to work so hard on everything and overcoming everything it's just really heavy like when you start from the bottom or near the bottom it's a long climb to the top with a lot of obstacles like oh yeah, i'll be coming back from heaven like haunting you but yeah. yeah yeah excellent excellent so how can people connect with you and be a part of your projects or your programs what is it that they can where can they find you to get involved yeah, so if you go to Jill Zambon, J I L L Z A M B O N dot com, under offerings, our conference is up for October 29th. So this is a free Transform Your Life conference. It is virtual and it's just three hours because I know we're all busy. I do plan to have in person ones and those will be posted as we plan them. But if you want to hop on that free one, that's where you can sign up. And then if you go to the writing page, you can also sign up for one of the four books that are coming out over the course of the next year, as well as speaking. I am separating in the future. If you want to write or speak, you can do both, obviously, but you can go find out about our speaking organization as well. Basically, I'll give you the platform to go out and speak in front of single parents. I do plan to separate males and female just because I'm aware of domestic violence and some things that even men might not want to be in with women. So there'll be opportunities for both men and women actually to be a speaker and a writer. Awesome. So tell me more about the book, because I know I'm a part of the book. I'm a collaborator yeah. on the book. So let's talk a little bit more about that and why you started the book and how it's snowballing into this movement. The book is called Shattering the Stigma of Single Motherhood. And I started it because I felt really like sometimes shunned for lack of a better word. So like I would go into a church and mm -hmm. feel like I just want to hide. Like people are judging me because I didn't show up with this perfect little family. There's one family I'd befriended at a church at home and they invited me over. They invited us over for Thanksgiving and we went. 
And she made a comment of us not having a whole family and how lonely it must be for us on holidays. And I said, it's not lonely. This is what we're used to. And this is what we know. It's actually very uncomfortable for us to be here Mm. with a huge family. I think it's important for people to see like single moms aren't unhappy with being a one parent household. And as a matter of fact, we form very strong bonds with our children because of that. And I think there's sometimes this misnomer that we got impregnated for the child support fund, which is hilarious because it doesn't even cover the cost of sending a kid to school, childcare, like groceries, doctor's bills, dentist visits, health insurance. And so the book is really just to show, no, this is the reality of a single mom. The reality of single mom is some of us I wouldn't say enjoy it, but some days I enjoy it. We're not like these sad people crying in the corner. We've embraced it and we're growing and we're healing and we're strong, independent women. And that's so funny. That's where it started. Just, oh, just write a book. Mm -hmm. That's literally like, I'll just write a book. And then obviously I've met like you and Katie and some of the other amazing women we have and just the energy that we have together I was like, this right here is magic. This is what I needed when I first became a single mom. I Mm -hmm. needed women like that to stand in front of me and say, I was there in your seat. Now I'm here. And this is how I got there. And you can do it too. Like your circumstances don't have to define your future. And then I've got, it's insane. Like I have people contacting me over the globe. I was on an India podcast this morning. I got invited to Mumbai, India. They want me to go in the schools. They want me to speak. It's so crazy (laughs) how needed this is, right? There's nonprofits that they'll give you diapers. They'll give you a car seat. They'll give you food, but that's a band-aid. So like, how do we fix the problem? And that's what I care about. Like, how do you catch this problem early enough that women don't, I don't want to say that we made a mistake, but so that they're aware of the red flags and men might not stick around. And I think having that support of trust your gut and your instinct, right? Because I think as women, we're taught to shove that down and ignore it. And it's no, you probably already know there is something not quite right, but you ignore it. So that's how the whole movement started. And it's just rapidly gaining momentum. I'm going on a reality TV show in two weeks, not even, I guess, yeah, on the 19th. So we can have and plan to promote this through there. And I think that'll be really great. It's also a business incubator workshop. Wes Bergman, who was a star on, what is it? Austin's Real World. Real World Austin. He is the one that leads it. And obviously he's like a huge reality TV star. So even the chance to meet him and let him know what I'm doing, I think is huge. That's invaluable. So I had actually lined that up like before all of this kind of got in motion. So it's crazy. It's big and it's exciting. For sure. And I'm excited to be a part of it too, because I get to, again, meet you and meet Katie. And like you said, the other ladies that are part of this project And it's like a combination, mastermind, networking, just friendship developing out of this whole thing. And thanks to you, I really appreciate that you were able to, you've got the courage to do it because it does take courage to do something this big. And just speaking of courage, like what advice would you give to single moms who are thinking about starting something big, like a business or going back to school or whatever dream that they've had for a while, but it was interrupted because of single motherhood. Yeah. I think the biggest piece of advice is don't listen to the naysayers. I got a lot of people in my family and my old friend circle. that are like, it's such a bad idea. What are you doing? Are you going to find new people to surround yourself with? And you just got to go for it. Like I talked to someone this week, sometimes it feel, you feel like this is not a logical decision. This is really not a smart decision. Like I'm highly outside of my comfort zone. How is this ever going to work out? I have no idea, but this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it. And obviously get in our tribe, even just come to our conference for free and meet us and get to know us. 
And however we help you through that path, just start there. Just start with having someone you can lean on. Listen to Samantha's podcast, right? Find the people you can lean on that are putting positive reinforcement in your mind about setting goals and achieving them rather than people that are telling you to stay in your comfort zone. Because if you continue to listen to those people, you're going to be stuck for a long time, I think. Long time. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Well, thank you, Jill. Thank you so much for that bit of advice, for being on the show, for sharing your behind the scenes of your life as a single mom and running a business as well, because it takes a lot to do all of that. But with determination, with decisiveness, we're able to actually pull it off <laughs> for people who are like, how do you do it all? Okay, so this is how we do it. And this is what we're sharing behind the scenes here. So thanks again for giving us the information. Tell us again where we can find you online, social media, et cetera, so that we can be sure to keep in touch with you. Yeah, jillzambon.com. And I'm pretty active on Instagram at jillzambon as well. And definitely shoot me a message too. I try to stay up on all of them. So if it takes me a day or two, it's okay. I'll get back to you. Awesome. Awesome. And thank you all for listening to the show today. Go to the show notes at richsinglemama.com slash radio, and you can get the show notes, learn more about Jill and the project and how you can become a part of that project. If you feel that you have a story to tell, that you want to be able to share with single moms to encourage them, especially if you are on the other side of the angst that single motherhood can bring about. We will see you next time and we hope you have an amazing day. Take care.